Hello students, Michael Sanchez here. Thank you so much for watching. Today is Fiddle Friday. Every Friday at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I'm teaching classes related to playing the fiddle. Uh, just for, for those of you guys that don't know, the fiddle and the violin are the exact same instrument, it's just the way that you play it. So for those of you guys that have a violin, this is a class that you can learn some different techniques on how to play, say, bluegrass music or Irish music or country music. So there's a lot of different types of music out there that you can play, and it's a lot of fun. We have a great class uh, set up for you guys today. We're going to be going through a song. We've been working through a book, and uh, today we're going to learn a new song um, in the book, which is going to be the next one from last week. Since we la last week we worked on Liza Jane, uh, this week we're going to be working on Camp Town Races. So that's the next one in the book. For those of you guys that don't have it yet, this is what it looks like. It's uh, You Can Teach Yourself Fiddling. So I'd like to introduce uh, each of the class members today. We have uh, four classmates, uh, and uh, Colleen as well is kind of popping in and out. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce Adeline. How are you doing today, Adeline? I'm fine. Hello to everybody. I'm fine. Good. Did you have a good, uh, I'd say Thanksgiving, but uh, you don't celebrate it there in Germany. Uh, but did you have a good few last couple days? Yes, it was great. Yeah. Very good. And I actually just shipped Adeline an instrument. Uh, she's going to be getting it any day, uh, one of the um, Romano violins. So are you pretty excited about getting your Romano soon, Alan? Yeah, I'm really happy because um, I like how it looks and the sounding, and yeah, it will be great. <laughs> Very good, yes. And I do have uh, some really great specials going on today for Black Friday. So if you guys are interested, go to uh, superiorviolence.com, and uh, you guys can take advantage of some really good sales on there, including the Romano. Uh, and also, we also have with us today Debbie. Debbie, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, how's your day going so far? Hi, everyone. It's been a very, very good day. Spent some time working on the violin. Good, good. That's good to hear. And uh, you're feeling a little bit better. You, you've been kind of under the weather this week. I'm okay. Good, good. We also have with us Eric uh, from Canada. How's things going up there in, uh, in Canada, Eric? Everything's going fine for me. Uh, for all the rest of the Canadians, I, I will assume that yes. <laughs> very, very good. So uh, where, where exactly in Canada are you located, Eric? I know you've told me once before. I, uh, I'm still kind of unsure. I, I've never been up there before. Um, so okay. kind of where are you in relation to the United States? Well, uh, I live in a city that's named Rimouski, so I'm sure that no one here heard about it. I live in the, I shortly at north of the United States, and I live at the eastern part of uh, Canada, in the province of Quebec, and east of the city of Quebec. So uh, where I live, the St. Lawrence River is uh, very large. It's uh, it looks a little bit lo more like a sea than a river. Uh, it's the it's a place when the we have the the Saint Lawrence River as uh, tides. It's uh, halfway between uh, salt water and uh, uh, um, I don't say La uh, Tiago the the what the, the the water of uh, a, a lake, for example, between a lake and uh, and the, the ocean. Okay, that's cool. Very nice. So thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, finally, we have with us uh, Sarah, my uh, student. She comes for a private lesson. She lives here locally um, to where I live in Grand Rapids. How are you doing, Sarah? Good. Good. So I heard you uh, did really well on your uh, audition. Uh, we've been working hard on your piece to get... Uh, solo first chair in your orchestra. Um, tell everybody the good news. <laughs> uh, I got it. You got first chair. Congratulations. So you get to play a solo for the next concert? Yeah. That's exciting. So uh, and that's the first time ever you're going to do a solo, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. It's exciting. So we'll, we'll have to keep working on that piece and getting it to be even better yet. And uh, that's really exciting. We have a recital coming up as well. So. Are you ready to play your piece for that, too? Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, well, we have a great class for you today. Um, you know, we're going to teach some fiddle techniques, kind of talk about some things and answer any questions you guys might have. Um, so 
Um, you, you, I'm not sure. You guys don't have the book yet. Um, I don't think, right? None of you guys have the book? Um, so I, I think uh, Debbie ordered it, so she's going to be getting it uh, any, any day. And I encourage you guys to get it for next week's class. Um, but uh, Canton Races, uh, if you guys want to look at the music here, it looks just like this. Um, it's got basically uh, some pretty simple notes. It's in the key of A major because there's three sharps. So there's basically going to be uh, F sharps, C sharps, and G sharps. And uh, nothing too complex, but we're going to put some different slides in there that's going to make it sound kind of fiddle-like. And last week we learned uh, about downsliding and upsliding. Um, so I'm just kind of going to give you guys a little bit of a um, recap on that, what that is. So basically an, an upslide is when we take the pitch of the note that we're going to play and we start off a half step below and we kind of work our way into that note. Like that. So we don't want to go farther. We want to hit, hit exactly where we want the note to, to be. So if we're trying to upslide into a C sharp, we start off with a C natural. It's like this. It should sound exactly like that. If you're doing it with the first finger, you should start off kind of where your B flat is on the A string and then slide into a B natural. Boom. Boom. It's like that. Uh, Sarah, do you have your violin with you today? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I know you weren't in the class uh, last week. Maybe if you want to give that a try, I just want to see if you can do the, the, the up slide. Um, it's uh, just, you know, that technique I just mentioned. Um, if you want to get that up, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. Um, so basically the up slide is uh, exactly what I was talking about. And there's also the down slide technique which is the exact opposite, where we start off with the pitch that we're going to play and then go down the neck, down in pitch. So we start off at this finger, now we're going down. So it um, goes down. And typically we do down slides on first fingers. So, very good. All right, Sarah, you ready to set up? Cool. And, uh, Sarah, you have a nice file in there. You have one of the Giovannis, right? Mm-hmm. Want to show everybody? <laughs> kind of bring it up to the camera a little bit. That's one of the quilted maples, the, the back. Show everybody the back. So it's got a nice quilted back. <laughs> cool. All right. So, uh, Sarah, yeah, go ahead and play the, uh, the up slide and the down slide for us. So this is the up slide on a first finger on the A string. <laughs> Very good. And then the down slide. Yep, and what you want to do is you want to um, actually uh, go all the way off the fingerboard. So like once you reach the very, very bottom, that's when the note ends. So that time we didn't go all the way down. We kind of just stopped here. You want to go all the way back. Try again. Very good. Okay, and then last week we did work on Liza Jane, and this was the markings that we put in for Liza Jane. So whenever we have those up slides, this is what it looks like just like this. And then if we have the downslide, it's the opposite. It's going kind of downwards with a little mark. So this first note is an upslide. This next one's just normal. And then this next one's a downslide and then normal. So upslide, normal, downslide, normal. It's going to sound just like this. So that normally would have been but because of the, the slides. Makes it sound a little more bluegrassy, a little more uh, hillbilly. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put some, uh, there's definitely some slides into Camp Town Races and uh, talk about some things. So this one actually does have some different rhythms as well, so we should probably talk about the rhythms as well. So whenever you guys see a um, dot with a, uh, a white circle, it means it's a half note. Whenever we see a dot, um, so 
basically this is a half note, that's two beats. And then when you see a dot after a half note, that's three beats. So this is going to go bum, 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 one, two. One, one, two, three, one, one, two, three. You guys probably know the tune, I'm guessing. Now this song has a lot of E string notes, so I want to encourage you guys to really work on getting your knuckles up. So we talked about this in lessons where a lot of students are kind of down here instead of being up with their knuckles. So I really encourage you guys to get your knuckles up like this instead of being flat. It's a lot more comfortable to do that. So like on a first finger on the E string, I see students all the time be really far away from the fingerboard instead of being tucked close with their knuckle up. They're kind of more like this instead of being like that. So there's a, there's a lot of those notes in here, the first fingers, and a lot of E string notes. So and you'll find a lot of fiddle music has a lot of E string notes. So it's really good to, um, to build that technique properly. And, uh, and also fiddle music is very fast. So there's a lot of stuff where you have to play you know, real fast. <laughs> So having your fingers up on the tips really makes a difference. So try to always keep that height. Never dip down for notes. Just place. Place fingers down. Good. All right. Um, so definitely encourage you guys to practice that. I can give you guys a little bit of a mark for those of you guys that haven't seen my lessons before and seen this um, demo. But I see that most students have their um, their hand this this high on the fingerboard, but it should be this high. So this is basically what it looks like. So many students are like more here, so now their fingers are more flat. We want to be here. Now our fingers are more on the tips. We've worked on this a lot in lessons, right, Sarah? We've done a lot of knuckles up training. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and Sarah's been playing for about three years. Uh, so this is something that doesn't just uh, happen in the first year of lessons. Um, I find students that have been playing even five, six, seven years really need to work on this. This is an ongoing thing. So, uh, but it's certainly the sooner you can get it, the better. So if you can start working on it um, early on, uh, it definitely makes a huge difference. Would you say, Sarah, with your with your training, with you you playing so far, um, with us helping you get your knuckles up, would you say it's helped you uh, be able to play faster in, in orchestra and, and different things? Uh, like it just it's. Yeah, it has in a way. So, um, but it also helps intonation, right? Accuracy, because like you know, if we're down here, we're always kind of moving the hand back and forth. Would you say? Yeah. So yeah, definitely something we've been working on. Um, so I highly encourage you guys to maybe put a mark on your hand to try to get your knuckles up. The hardest finger to do it on is the first finger. So really try to get that one up. Um, most likely you're going to be more like this instead of being like this. And I've, I've been working on this with a lot of students, and they tell me, well, it's too hard to do that. A lot of times it's probably because you're gripping the, the fingerboard too hard. You have too much tension right here. Try to relax. Try to just place the, your hand on the instrument, hold it properly here, and then just squeeze. See, I'm not moving anything. I'm just putting it right here like that. So yeah, if you guys can do that, just come off and onto the fingerboard so you're not like relying on holding it really tight. That would be a good practice. All right, so uh, this song could definitely use some sliding. So let's go ahead and um, give some recommendations on that. So the third note, I would slide. And then the first note of the second measure. And then right into that note. OK, so this is my recommendation of the slides. So the C sharp, uh, we're going to slide into that one. We're going to slide into this E1. And then right after we slide into it, we're going to downslide. So that's kind of a new one we didn't have in the last one, like a right away upslide, downslide. It's going to sound like this. It's kind of like you're coming up and down. 
So is. Like that. Actually, even put another slide in there on the uh, F C sharp there. On this note, I think that worked pretty good. It's like that. And then definitely on these long notes, it works good to do the, the sliding. So let's do that whole first line. It's like that. So that makes it sound kind of cool, kind of bluegrassy. And then the next line, let's put some slides in. Same kind of thing with the up and down with the E1. And then we're going to do a down slide on that second line towards the end on this B and slide down into that A. Anytime you see a first finger, you, you tech, uh, it's a really good spot to probably do a down slide. Notice there's a down slide there. There's a down slide here, 1 and 0. There's a down slide here between 1 and 0. Let's try this line. I kind of added one in there I did on the C sharp. The thing is with fiddle music, it's it's so uh, laid back to where you can do something different each time. <laughs> one time you can do it one way and the second time another way. Uh, one thing I found with students that go from classical to fiddle training is they tend to like be very technical on every single symbol. Like they, um, they have a hard time doing something outside of the box, outside of what's written. Uh, fiddle, fiddle is very much different in that way that it's a lot more improvisation, it's a lot more interpretation. So if you're very much a strict classical player and you're used to reading like, you know, the dynamics and the articulation, that's good. But try to get try to be a little more open minded with fiddle. Try to just kinda do it differently each time, interpret it different ways each time. And that leads into like playing in a group, like just doing different solos each time or different things like that. So that time I did it totally different each time. Uh, but certainly, it's nothing wrong with writing in the, the symbols uh, for suggestions and stuff to, to practice. So that's totally fine. All right, let's go on to the next line. Definitely want to slide into that one. And I recommend that you guys uh, try to do this, uh, you know, a couple different ways without following what I'm saying and see if you can figure some stuff out, make it sound cool. So I'm going to slide up on this E3. This is, a, this is a whole note, four beats. I'm going to slide down on this F sharp into the E. Up here, down there, and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so now, like I said earlier, fiddle music is all about playing fast. So uh, what I recommend is that you guys get a metronome, and then you start working on building up speed. So what I would recommend is that you start doing this piece, say, at between 40 and 60 beats per minute. Um, any basic um, phone is going to have, uh, like, a, a metronome app, any, like, a Apple iPhone. Uh, I have, like, the Pro metronome on my phone. But you can certainly get them at stores, or I think there's different things online that work. Um, so right now you can see, hopefully see, there's 120 right there. That's 120 clicks uh, per minute. So I'm definitely going to slow it down, uh, say, to 60. 60 beats per minute is just like a second on the clock. So that's 60 beats per minute. Okay, I don't know if you guys can hear this or not. Hopefully you guys can hear that. Okay. So I would start off playing this piece maybe at this speed at 60. So every quarter note is going to be one of those clicks. This might be a little bit slow. So 
So that might be on the slow side. Like for those dotted half notes, make sure that there's three clicks, three of those you're waiting for. Let's speed it up. So now uh, what I would do is if you're doing that really well, maybe speed it up to 65 or 70. Kind of work your way up. Now let's say I've been working on that for, let's say, a week or two. And I've been working it up. Let's say I'm at 120 now. So I'm almost double speed now. Maybe if you did that pretty good, you could speed it up a couple notches. So it's at 120. I'm going to kind of circle it around. Uh, now it's at 123. I mean, so you can keep kind of going up more and more each time so you build up speed. Let's say I've been practicing it for a while. And this is going to depend on how advanced you are. So if you're like um, maybe Sarah, she's been playing for three years, this is going to be a lot more possible than somebody that's been playing a year. So uh, this is going to be totally different for each person. But if you've been playing, say, three years, there's definitely no doubt I, I would say you could probably do it at 165, 170. This is 170. you guys could just play along with that um, without having to do the metronome. Just play along with me. <laughs> so that was 170. So working up speed is a definitely a big part of playing the fiddle. You're going to find that a lot of times in fiddle music, uh, the music is not as hard uh, technically wise with the notes or the rhythms even, but the techniques and the, um, the speed is the biggest things. You're not going to see a lot of shifting. You're not going to see a lot of technical like uh, shifts or, or stretches or anything like that. You're going to see a lot more just uh, notes you have to just wail on and play fast. <laughs> um, so keep that in mind when you're practicing. I uh, highly recommend you guys get a metronome, and uh, that's going to really go a long ways in, in uh, helping you guys out to uh, work up speed, which is a big part of playing the fiddle. Do you guys have any questions about that, about the metronome, maybe about the piece so far, what we've done? Uh, feel free to chime in and uh, ask anytime. I do notice uh, Colleen's watching from the audience. She says she's sorry she can't participate, but she should be in a in, uh, future class probably tomorrow or Sunday, she says. Very good. So, um, Adeline, uh, as far as the fiddle songs, um, are you pretty interested in learning uh, some of the styles? I mean, are you interested in a particular fiddle style or just kind of anything um, generally fiddly related? Yeah, I'm interested to learn general fiddle. And I ordered the book, but I have to wait uh, 20 days until I can get it, because in Germany it's hard to get this book. And yeah, I, I just want to learn fiddle, normal fiddle. Okay, cool. Uh, Debbie, I, I know this might have been a little bit maybe over your head. You just started, you know, this past month. <laughs> so hang in there if anything was confusing. Um, the key of A major is something we you probably haven't done before, um, but it's basically that it's high twos all the way across the, the instrument, so high two on the G, D, A, E, whenever you see those three sharps, you're always going to have those high twos next to your three on the A and E, and then, yeah, I won't go any further, but there's high three on that D and G. Um, good. Uh, Eric, so uh, did you like the song? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think that uh, fiddle is uh, a way to learn different things, like the sliding. Uh, it's uh, something new to add to our practice, I think. Very good. Uh, Sarah, any questions at all, or um, just a matter of practice? <laughs> I'm good. Cool. All right, so uh, yeah, I really encourage you guys to participate in these classes. Uh, they're really interactive and fun. Um, after every class, I'm actually opening it up to students asking more questions, and uh, we've been actually hanging out quite a while, so I guess that kind of goes into what the, the platform is called, Google Hangout. Uh, we've been hanging out uh, quite a while. Last night we were, we were doing it for 
um, over an hour, so that was fun. Um, so this is a great platform to meet other people, other violinists, and uh, get to know each other and encourage each other. A lot of these students actually are talking, like you know, um, amongst themselves via email and chat. So it's fun. And uh, last night, um, uh, Cindy was actually really disappointed. She was trying to get in the, into the class, and uh, like she was like running late. She was like speeding up in traffic, and I guess she almost got in a car accident because she was trying to get to the class so fast. <laughs> So um, that's how exciting it's been for some of the students, and uh, it's certainly been fun for me to teach all you guys. And uh, um, we're doing a different class each day, so tomorrow we're going to do another class at 5 o'clock. And every day there's a different class. If you guys are interested in the schedule, go to my website, violentutorpro.com. In the middle of the page, you'll see a Google uh, Hangout link. You just click on that, and it'll show you the schedule, along with a cool video that my wife put together. And uh, also, if you guys are interested on the electric violins, they are almost going to be sold out probably by Monday. I've sold actually eight of them so far. I have about 18 of them. So if any of you guys are interested in that, um, I actually just reserved one for Susan. Uh, she wanted one. And uh, certainly, if you're interested, uh, let me know. Send me a, an email, rivertownviolin at hotmail.com. So I look forward to seeing you guys in uh, uh, class to come. And um, so let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to li uh, live chat me on my websites or email me. So thanks so much for joining us and hope you guys have a great day.